help me in this video, we'll show you how to do the basic data acquisition using the NanoMatters A-Star system. The session is assisted by my student, De Xin Zhao. The first thing is to make sure the beam is well aligned in TEM. This is our NanoMatters A-Star system on the Tecna TEM. To start the session, you right-click the up arrow, then click the signal inspector button, open the signal inspector. Now a window is opened, so turn on the GIS control. Next, we'll mount the camera. Make sure you remove the lid. This is what the system is supposed to look like after mounting the camera. The camera is required to record the diffraction pattern for each pixel. To load the pre-existing alignment file, you click on the 4500 extraction voltage one. Then click on set. Then click on the search tab to change the aperture. When doing the A star acquisition, we use the smallest condensed aperture. In this case, it's 30 micron. Make sure the objective aperture is retracted. To further refine the beam size, we usually use a large spot size number. In this case, we use 9 or 10. After selecting the right condenser aperture and the spot size, perform the standard beam alignment, such as beam shift and the pivot point. Before the data acquisition, make sure you lift up the small screen. Then cover the fishbowl with the beam blank. Double click the top spin data collection. And this is the interface you see. Now enter the specimen name. For top spin data acquisition, all the alignment should be done at the magnification of 38,000 times. Find the vacuum first, then click on search, and you will see the beam. Converge the beam using the intensity knob, making that as small as possible. Center the beam. After this step, move to the area of interest. And you can see the specimen is not at the exact eccentric height, so use Z to bring the specimen to the right eccentric height. Then move back to the vacuum. Moving forward, click on the pivot point. In this step, make sure we define the precession angle. In this example, we'll use 0.3 degrees. You can see that when the precession is on, the beam is distorted. To correct the beam, you can do the amplitude and the phase automatic alignment. When the beam looks pretty good, just manually stop it. To further reduce the artifacts caused by precession, click on compensation. The beam looks pretty good and manually we can stop it. To make sure the beam position is not severely affected by precession, we click on the offset correction. In this case, we don't have to manually stop it. The computer will tell us when it's corrected. Moving to step three, diffraction focus. Center the beam using the trackball. Click diffraction. Select the camera lens. We usually use 135 millimeters. The spot you see on the screen is actually in the diffraction mode, center the beam using the multifunction knobs. And in the camera lens box, enter the camera lens. So it's 0.135.
under the alignment menu, click true, and the electron beam will be moving. Use the diffraction focus knob, which is also the focus knob, to minimize the movement of the beam. Click on false to deactivate the alignment. Moving to step four, series area. In the top spin software, the magnification is not controlled by the microscope anymore. It's actually controlled by the software. Down here, select a magnification you desire to use. In this example, we use 3000. Click on diffraction to view the diffraction beam on the right screen. Move back to the specimen, to the area of interest. Resize the blue circle to only encapsulate the directed spot. This will help us form the virtual bright field image on the left. Now we can acquire the virtual bright field image. The frame size controls the pixel or the resolution of the image. Smaller the number, worse the resolution, larger the number, better the resolution. In this example, we use uh, 80 and click on scanning. The virtual bright field stem image is acquired. What you see on the left is the virtual bright field stem image. The resolution is not great, do not worry about it because we will not use this data. This serves only as a guideline. Moving to step number five, 3D scan. Under the optimization menu, you can apply mask by increasing the number, the diffraction spots will show up. Resize the blue circle. Then left click on one diffractive spot and resize and center the blue circle again. Click on optimize. The idea of optimization is to make those spots as small as possible. When you don't see any changes, manually stop it. Moving to step number six, focus. Find a feature with very strong contrast. The example here is pretty good, going from bright to dark, then to bright again. Click on diffraction, then click on beam focus, and you see a profile. Click on pivot height, you see a new profile. The new profile resembles the previous profile. This tells us the pivot height is the same as the specimen height. If you see a huge difference between these two curves, then click on optimize. In this case, we don't have to do so. We usually do not use the setup drift, so we skip step seven and click on series to acquire the data. Click on preview. The diffraction pattern is a live one. If you drag the cursor around, it will change. Uh, make sure the right block file is enabled. Usually it's enabled. For orientation mapping, we usually use the frame size 144 to reduce the size of the file. Find a region of interest, as well as the number of points in x and y directions and the step size. In this example here, we use a step size of 10 nanometers, then in x and y directions, both are 200 pixels. After identifying the area of interest, move the cursor around to make sure the diffraction pattern looks nice. Place the cursor to the bottom left of the box because the scan starts from the bottom left. Double check a few more things. Make sure the diffraction spots are centered and the transmitted beam is within the blue circle. Click on Acquire. 
the acquisition has started. The acquisition has completed, and you can see the virtual bright field stem image here. By dragging the cursor in the virtual bright field stem image, the diffraction pattern corresponds to where you're looking at or where the cursor is at. In addition to the block file, if you also want to have the app5 file, you can click on archive to do so. After the data acquisition, you can close the top spin software. More importantly, make sure you turn off the GIS system. Mount the camera. Also make sure put the cover back on the lens to protect it. This is the end of our data acquisition tutorial. In the next video, we'll show you how to do data analysis.